What is going on guys, Jack here and welcome to episode 9 of the Revival here with Gamba Osaka in the J-League First Division. So I just want to kick off this episode by giving a quick thank you to one of my subscribers, Christopher Maddy. Um, he informed me that I didn't have the proper names for all these teams in the league um, installed. This was a little while ago in terms of episodes but I've been kind of stockpiling videos so he mentioned it and what actually happened was I downloaded and um, got the real name patch in and the Ash national side patch but what had happened was um, I'd had a problem with FM a few weeks ago and I'd had to basically clear the cache and download, re-download all the files and in doing so it downloaded some of the files that I deleted so uh, unfortunately for us that means the national team is still not going to be working I say unfortunate because it kind of gives me the opportunity to use... I, I want to call it an exploit, but it's not really an exploit. But essentially, we can, with some of these players who are um, kind of uh, real players, we can offer them contracts where after X amount of international appearances, they'll get a certain amount of kind of contract uh, contract wage hikes. Uh, but because they'll never reach it because it's not patched, uh, I'm going to try and refrain from using that despite how tempting it may be to kind of lure players in with false hope of playing in the national side. So anyway, getting on into today's episode, it has been, of course, the pre-season. Last episode was an epic tie, and if you missed it, you are going to want to check it out. It was the Empress Cup final, huge tie. Uh, today we actually have the Xerox Super Cup, which is kind of the Super Cup between the winners of the Empress Cup and the winners of the league, which uh, is not Funabashi Bandits, it is in fact Raysol. Uh, and I kind of like these real names because they're a lot more easy to pronounce, uh, which is quite nice on me. But no, really cool to see these like proper names now uh, I had suspected it but thank you to as I said Christopher for helping me out with that and without further ado let's take a look at our squad so last season we got promoted and our finances were okay but they weren't great uh, looking at the kind of dealings that I've done as you can see here we're set to make a profit this season and we have a fairly healthy balance despite me having spent quite a lot of money but uh, let's move into the transfers because you guys are kind of, kind of probably kind of wondering where is this money come from and I want to start off by apologizing because I've sold a few fan favorites here and I know people aren't going to be happy but ultimately there were some deals that I just couldn't refuse so anyway on the outs we start off AD Rocker here the uh, young Brazilian I say young he's middle aged Brazilian um, he's not a bad player and he played okay last season but as a lone striker to get 6 goals in 22 he's going to struggle to step up this year he also fills a foreign player slot in my side of which I can have Four players from out. I think it's four or five players uh, who are foreign who aren't from Japan, and three of those can be from outside of Asia. So this was one of the three. So I got him out. I think 450k for him. Whilst not the greatest amount ever considering his value, I'm kind of happy just to get some money for him. And in selling him, it gives me some space to manoeuvre. Other players going out here. We have Tatsuya. Um, Unchida, what a name, what a name, this guy, 21 years old, he's an okay player, but I think to get 350k for him was a decent little dealing, a few players going out on freeze, uh, one being Kawamura, didn't do enough to impress last season to warrant me extending his contract, came in as a bit of a kind of backup player, uh, only made a handful of appearances last season. He made four in the league. Ultimately, uh, didn't warrant having his contract extended, so I just let that run low. Uh, the other player going out was Yuzuki uh, Fujigaya, uh, the goalkeeper. He's gone out for a free. He's now playing uh, at Argia here in the J League One. So, I mean, they're quite a good team. Uh, and I'm hoping that's not going to come back to bite me. But I have got some very good goalkeepers and he just wasn't going to be playing for us. So I let him go out on a free. And this is where we get to the big sales. As you can see here, Kano, Awishita and Johnny all going out for a total near 8 million. Which, to be honest, I think most of you would agree that I've done pretty well to get these deals for them. But anyway, looking at them, Yasuyuki, uh, I can't say that name, Yasuyuki Kono, there we go. <laughs> Going out here, uh, I mean, he's a great player, don't get me wrong, but he's 30 years old, and to get 2.5 million for him, I thought was a decent bit of business. The other thing was, his contract was running out at the end of this year, and he was wanting a wage in the reason, region of £20,000, which I just simply wasn't willing to give him, so I let him go out. We have Iwashita going out here. He's a really good centre-back, don't get me wrong, but considering the fact that I got £2.2 .2 million for him, it was hard to turn it down, and I think I've got some decent alternative centre-backs. Um, this guy's the one who I'm worried I may regret selling, but again, he too had a contract that ran out at the end of this season, and he did want a big wage hike, which I wasn't willing to match, so cashing in on him while I could. 
Last but not least of the big transfers out, Johnny going out for £3 million. Now, again, this guy was superb last season. 15 goals, uh, probably the top player of the season. He came in for a £1 million. I've sold him on for three times that, which I think is a good little bit of business. And I've also got a replacement in for Johnny. So I'm sad to see this guy go, but the replacement I've got in is Lee Addy. Who, if you look at the stats here, uh, Lee Addy's just a better rounded off centre back. He has a little bit more going forward. He's better in the air, just doesn't quite have the mentals that Johnny has. But I mean, all in all, you can see here, technically, Lee Addy is a superior player and physically too. And he's younger. So that's that dealing. And I'll just cover the Lee Addy signing now. So you can see the comparison between these two guys. But Lee Addy. Um, he came in for £1.5 million. He's a quality little player. Looking forward to seeing this guy play. 22 years old. And hopefully he can be the Johnny replacement that I needed to find. Anyway, just two more signings on the out. Here we have Hodotoshi Wakui. What a name. Uh, this guy went to Belmare uh, for... Was it a free? I can't remember. He went there for 170 k Again, a fringe player came in to us for 120 k And to sell him on for a little bit of a profit, I think that's a little good bit of business. Uh, last season, I signed him as backup. He was never called upon. And so I've just let him go this season for a little bit of money. And it kind of raises morale in the camp because a few of these players who I've sold uh, or let go were players who were unhappy at the club and dragging down morale. So letting them go should be good for us. The last out was Kenya Ozaki. Um... This guy, good little player, uh, young, maybe a little bit of potential to develop. I wanted to sell him really, but I managed to get a loan offer him where they were willing to pay the entire of his wages. Uh, so I thought that was a good little bit of business, so I let him go out. So anyway, now we move on to the ins. And on the ins, there's a few interesting ones here. I've taken a few risks. You, I've sold a few big defenders. I, I want to think that my defence is in a stronger posi position than it was last season. I personally don't think it's quite there yet. But there's a few players uh, here who I think are going to make uh, kind of more than up for the players we've lost. So anyway, the first of our new foreign players replacing Rocker is Marcelo Vega. This guy is an 18-year-old Bolivian striker. Five caps at Bolivian's national side with three goals. Looking at his stats, fantastically gifted technical striker. Good determination. Some semi-decent decent physicals. His big weakness is his injury proneness and his lack of physicals, but I'm hoping he can overcome that. He's still very young and physicals are quite easy to improve. But all in all, looking like a very good player for us and getting him in on a free after he was released by his university. But Bolivian international, good little player for us. Another player coming in was Ryoichi Maeda. This guy is a quality striker. A Japanese international. You can see looking at his stats. Superb. Uh, got him in on a free. His contract ran out. £11,000 a week isn't a cheap wage by any means. But this guy, 31 years old, brings bags of experience. And I'm hoping he's going to do what Rocker didn't do last year. And grab a bag full of goals from up front as a big target man. Particularly with the wide players we have as well. Crossing is a big part of our game and this guy's aerial prominence and natural ability when it comes to finishing is definitely going to help him in that department. Next signing in, uh, Kaz Kazuka Miyahara, uh, 16 years old, come in, comes in uh, with a bag full of potential, really rated highly by everyone in Japan it would seem. Uh, main strength is his speed, but this guy, good little bit of kind of youth and a bit of potential. Come in on a free, I can't really complain too much with that one. We also have here Daigo Kobayashi. Um, looking at him, he's come from Vancouver in the MLS for 170k, which I think is a great little signing. Looking at his stats, he's 30 years old. Uh, he's come in. Considering that I sold players for a total of eight million pounds, it gave me quite a bit of mo kind of money to manoeuvre in. So this guy, 30 years old, a backup playmaker, adds a little bit more strength to the area of the squad which we lacked last year, which was the central midfield area, and that's something that I've really kind of upped in terms of competition with some of these new signings. As I mentioned, Lee Addy was the big transfer, and I've already covered him, but 1.5 million pounds, Ghanaian international, uh, 22 years old, bags of potential. Looking forward to seeing him play. Here we have uh, Jean Marquez Davidson, uh, Japanese and American. Um, I think I signed him too from Vancouver as well. Yep, Vancouver, 275k for this guy. 29 years old, Japanese into uh, sorry Japanese national, which helps with um, obviously the foreign player cap. Uh, it's tough to get in Japanese players on the cheap, but this guy's a really good centre defensive mid, who I'm also training to play centre back with the hope that he may be able to adapt to that role quickly and potentially offer me an alternate option at centre back. 
So he's a really good signing. Here we have, again, Solji. This guy bags a potential again. Centre-back. Um, with me losing my uh, centre-backs in Kono, uh, Johnny and Iwashita, it was vital that I am kind of improved it and kind of, I guess, plugged the gaps that were left behind. This guy's 20 years old. Really good defence stats. Really good defending. Perhaps lacks the strength of a centre-back, but he's got the core attributes there, and he's only 20. Plenty of time to improve, and he came in for 900k. Uh, second to last signing, as you can see here, uh, Kazu uh, Kazuaki Yamasaki, 17 years old again, this guy, great young talent, looking forward to seeing how this guy gets on uh, for the side, um, very excited by this prospect, 17, looking at his potential ability, four and a half star, hopefully he lives up to that, but half a million pound for him, a little bit of a risk, but I'm hoping it will come good for us. And the final signing at the moment is Yukio uh, Tushishia. We'll go with that. This guy, 38 years old, just a backup centre-back because I was lacking a centre-back. He comes in on a free, um, and he's a good little signing for us. So looking at the squad depth here, you can see centre-back is definitely an area that we maybe could do with one or two more players in. But all in all, I'm really happy with the squad, particularly going forward. If I show you the starting eleven that we're going to be using today in the Super Cup, uh, you can see how we have kind of just such a good... Uh, I guess midfield and attack, that's where our strengths lies. We have Maeda, who's going to be the big target man this season for us at centre forward. Hoping he can win it in the air, as I've already mentioned. Obviously, Usami this season, great season last year for the young 18, uh, sorry, young 19 year old as it was at the time. He's now 20, 38 appearances last year, 9 goals, 23 assists. Plenty of time to improve this guy, and so I'm looking forward to seeing how he gets on. Uh, we have Escudario, who we signed last season. He's going to be playing on the right-hand side. Again, very similar to Usami. Pacey, natural winger. Uh, Japanese national as well, which helps with the foreign player rule. Uh, you will notice this year there that I've mixed up the formation a bit. We've gone with Vega, who's the Bolivian. Just off the front, man. I feel as if uh, kind of having, I guess, Maeda as a big target man and then Vega, who's a pacey attacking midfielder, just playing off him is going to work really nicely for us. And then in midfield, I've gone with Davidson as kind of a, defensive midfielder hanging back a little bit got great defensive stats for that kind of role in terms of just winning the ball I suppose for us and then pushing forward uh, he suits that role very nicely and we have Kobayashi who also came from Vancouver these two guys uh, partnered each other at centre mid uh, for uh, Vancouver and I'm hoping they can kind of rekindle that central midfield partnership uh, today so anyway, looking at this squad, the idea with these two centre mids is that uh, Kobayashi will kind of sit deep and what Davidson does is he defends, then when we have the ball because he's set to support, he'll actually push up and kind of make it this shape, uh, I guess a 4-2-3-1. My big worry when I play 4-2-3-1 uh, is the fact that you never really have a man covering the space and that's one reason why I'm kind of less inclined to use it, uh, but I feel with this kind of partnership in centre mid and given the fact that these two guys have both played obviously alongside each other... Um, at Vancouver, it should play very nicely into our hands. I'm not even sure. I've not actually checked this, but I'm not sure if they're on each of his favourite personnel. Um, uh, I don't think they will be looking at it. But, I, I mean, these two guys, they have a partnership. They have an understanding, I hope. And I think it's going to be interesting to see how they do. But anyway, that is our side. Uh, at th we still have the standard fullbacks on last season in... Um, I guess Fujiharu, who will be playing at left back. Great Japanese player. And then at right back, we have OJ Siok, uh, who is the Korean international, whose contract runs out at the end of this year. I've tried selling him. Couldn't quite get him out for any money. I'm hoping I might be able to re-sign him on a contract, but, you know, time will tell. Um, and then at centre-back, we go with Lee Addy, the Ghanaian international, and um, Jen Soji, who is the young centre-back with loads of potential. So hopefully these two can really strike up a partnership at centre-back. I'm really happy with the squad as a whole. I think we've improved a lot more. Uh, Vela Fee, or Vela La is it Vela Fee? Vela Fee? We'll go with it. I know I have Australian subscribers, so they probably know how to say this guy's name. Um, we go with him in goal. Uh, quality little keeper for us. Did well last season. Hoping for more of the same this season. But all in all, I'm really optimistic uh, kind of with the side. You can see we have quite good strength in depth now. There are a few players still that I'm looking at potentially bringing in. Uh, you can see here that um, there's a few offers gone in for various players. And... We we have some we have some transfers lined up. Tandari Lee is one who I might try and sign from Southampton. Very ambitious signing, but it'd be amazing if we could pull it off. Uh, and then there's a few other options. 
uh, like this guy, um, Mike Vianhaar, who is currently transfer listed at, uh, is it Vitize? I want to say Vitize. I know I have Dutch subscribers as well. They're probably going to tell me how to say this name. Uh, but I'm hoping that I can get this guy in as well. If I could get either of those strikers in, they'd really add to the strike force of the team. And I may even consider switching to a 4-4-2 shape if I could get one of those players in. But for this game, which is the Super Cup, they're going to be lining up in a 4-2-3-1 of sorts. Gamba v Reysol today. Uh, we are playing at the National Stadium of Japan. Reysol are the favourites, obviously. We actually beat them in the uh, Empress Cup last season. Uh, and I'm hoping that we can just maintain that level of performance uh, again this year because to be honest we outplayed them last season and I'm hoping for more of the same this season the, the shape that they're currently playing is the shape I might switch to if I get the other forward or I might contemplate switching Kobayashi to sit slightly deeper but it's all up in the arrows of course I've not made uh, either signing yet so I don't want to get too far ahead of myself but we do go into today's game we are not the favourites there is no pressure on us at all to go out there and get a result uh, and I'm just hopeful that we can do I guess more of the same, really. So we will show uh, the wide players onto their weaker foot. And then hard tackle the wingers as well. So hopefully we can do well today. I'm just going to tell the guys, no one expects us to get a result. Go out there and have some fun. Uh, and then I have faith. Right, we'll see how we get on. Obviously no expectations on us really to go out and get a goal today or even go out and win today. So pressure is all on Raysol. Uh, Lee Addy getting a good header there. They're playing in yellow and they've had an early chance and Velafi gets a fine save there to deny the opportunity. We've got to defend the set piece as well, uh, which we've done. So weathering some early pressure, just two minutes in the first shot coming for Raysol. Look at the stats. It looks like they've really turned up this game. Uh, I believe when we played them in the Emperor's Cup, they played a second string team, which they may well regret. Uh, or well, I'm sure they regretted it considering that we ended up winning the whole thing. Um, but I'm hoping that we can still maintain a good level of performance here. And they've got a chance here. Keeper misses it and uh, Tanaka gets the goal for them to make it 1-0. Disappointing bias. Um, I think Velafi at fault in goal there. Although Lee Addy gets sucked into the space. Uh, uh, Tanaka just kind of exploits the space, I suppose, in behind the defence that was created by Lee Addy getting dragged out position. And Reysa will make it 1-0, and now they have a set piece, hits the crossbar, Velafi recovers well to get the second save there, but at the moment it is all Reysa in the second half. Uh, and I think that I'm going to have to make some tactical changes sooner rather than later, unless we're going to get ourselves back in the game as we do go on the attack. Usami, the youngster, charging at the defence, gets tackled though. This is where we really need to defend well here. You can see our general shape, how we have the two centre mids uh, who defend well. And the ball gets whipped in and we get lucky again. Okay, um, I don't want to change the tactics too soon, but uh, something's got to give. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to switch to a more conservative setup, I think, in terms of trying to hit them on the counter, because at the moment we are playing attacking against them, and I'm a little bit worried that we're leaving ourselves exposed at the back, so we're going to sit tight in the centre, try and use the wings when we can hit the counter, and see how we get on, but they've got a chance here, uh, don't give away a penalty, uh, of course they give away a penalty, I, I could see it coming, um, that's unfortunate, but hopefully we can maybe get a save, this would be a big hit against us, and it is a big hit against us, Ray Sol go 2-0 up in the Super Cup final, uh, and going into half time we've just not turned up today, we've been uh, poor all in all, and I'm certainly going to be looking to make some changes for the second half. So, um, assertive, show me something else in the second half, and then um, you can improve, right, we'll see how we get on there. Uh, I'm going to now pause it. Tactics. I need to mix things up here. Um, I'll tell you what we're going to do. We are going to we're going to risk it a little bit. We're going to risk it a little bit. We're going to we're going to switch to a lot more kind of counter attacky tactic, I suppose. Um, with full backs, and then we're actually going to play with wingers rather than inside forwards, and we're just going to play on the counter. Uh, and see how we get on. Um, there's no expectations on us to win here. I'm just hoping for a good team performance all in all. So we'll see what we can do in this second half. Um, 
as we, I guess we go into it, 2-0 down, we've kind of got to chase it. It's a one-off game. It's not like there's going to be any lasting effects other than maybe a hit on morale if we go down. But with defending and passing like that, we deserve to be 3-0 down. That was poor. That's race all making it 3-0 now. And simply put, we've just not turned up today, uh, which is unfortunate because you know, these are the kind of games where you do want to turn up and have something to shout about. But Reisol giving us a lesson here. They are the best team in Japan. Uh, and realistically, we always knew the tie was going to be tough, but this is, this is really disappointing. But we have got a chance here. Maeda, the sub, missing a sitter there. Um, going to make some changes. We'll take off Vega, who's struggled a little bit this game and is already booked. Um and we'll bring on Paulinho for, um, I don't know, for uh, Maeda. And just we'll just mix things up. We've got to kind of risk things now, I suppose. Um, yeah, dis disappointing, to say the least. Um, been loads of highlights in this game, but just nothing coming our way, unfortunately. Uh, we've been outplayed by a better team. You can see the quality's better. Obviously, the team's still adapting to the new system that we're trying to play. I still have got the option to fall back on kind of, um, I guess, the 4-3-3 that served us so well last season, if need be. But I really would like to try and mix things up this season and maybe go for games a little bit more, despite the fact that we've only just been promoted, because, I mean, we did really well to win the Emperor's Cup last year. And we proved that we can beat teams in and around us this season. You know, the teams who we're going to come up against... Uh, we've played and I think today is just an example of where perhaps the lack of gelling with the squad and the lack of understanding between our centre-backs is just on show at the moment and I'm hoping it will improve. We have got a chance here. Escudario does grab a goal. Um, unless something very strange happens here, I can't see it being any more than um, kind of a consolation if I'm honest. Usami just finding a little bit of space. Escudero appears on the back post. Gets in front of his marker. Good goal. A good little bit of movement. And good understanding between the two wingers. Um, and I'm hoping that that will be a trend come the rest of this season. But we've got to go for this game now. I think it's going to be too little too late as we do get an injury to Davidson. Unfortunately, I've used all my subs so that is a bit of a bummer. But uh, there's not much time left anyway. And Sochi's also taken a knock. Uh, but we just don't have the options to change to. Um, looks like they could even grab another here, which would be mightily disappointing. But it's been a disappointing performance all in all. Uh, Tanaka getting his hat trick as well, which um, is really rubbing salt in the wound. Um, unfortunate that he's getting marked by an injured man, I think. Um, oh, no, he wasn't. In fact, that was just bad bad marking by Lee Addy. But... Um, 4-1 is embarrassing, uh, really disappointing, um, but I'm, I'm optimistic that we can hopefully turn this around for the rest of the season, uh, I'm far from pleased with that result, um, it, was, it, was, it was a bad performance, at least the, at least the players recognised that I suppose, but that was really poor, really poor, um, yeah I don't really know what to say, um, we've got Sawan coming up in the Champions League, I think the next update I'm going to do will probably be maybe the second tie against Suwon, which is um, the 10th of the 4th. Uh, the fixtures are really spread out at the start of the season anyway, so it'll give me plenty of time to kind of assess the team's uh, performances, you know, in a month and a bit's time. And really keep you guys uh, up to date and give you a really good analysis of what's happened so far and kind of my tactical thoughts. But anyway, hopefully you enjoyed the episode, guys. If you did, be sure to like the video. It does help me out. Uh, if you enjoyed the series, as always, you know, leave a comment. Let me know what you made of it. And other than that, uh, guys, I will talk to you in a bit. Thank you so, so much for watching, as always. And it is me, Jack. And I'm out. I'll talk to you guys in a bit.